In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace and peace and love of God our Father and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, to prepare our hearts to enter into the sacred mysteries, let us together call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. May the Virgin Martyr, St. Agatha, implore your compassion for us, O Lord, we pray, for she found favor with you by the courage of her martyrdom and the merit of her chastity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. The elders of Israel and all the leaders of the tribes, the princes, and the ancestral houses of the children of Israel came to King Solomon in Jerusalem to bring up the ark of the Lord's covenant from the city of David, which is Zion. All the people of Israel assembled before King Solomon during the festival of, in the month of Ethian, the seventh month. When all the elders of Israel had arrived, the priests took up the ark. They carried the ark of the Lord and the meeting tent with all the sacred vessels that were in the tent. The priests and Levites carried them. King Solomon, and the entire community of Israel pre present for the occasion sacrificed before the ark, sheep and oxen, too many to number or count. The priest brought the ark of the covenant of the Lord to its place beneath the wings of the cherubim in the sanctuary, the holy of holies of the temple. The cherubim had their wings spread out over the place of the ark, sheltering the ark and its poles from above. There was nothing in the ark but the two stone tablets which Moses had put there at Horeb. When the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel at their departure from the land of Egypt, <clears throat> when the priest left the holy place, the cloud filled the temple of the Lord so that the priest could no longer minister because of the cloud since the Lord's glory had filled the temple of the Lord. Then Solomon said, the Lord intends to dwell in the dark cloud I have truly built you a princely house, a dwelling where you may abide forever. The word of the Lord. Be Lord, go up to the place of your rest. Behold, we heard of it in Eph Ephrata. We found it in the fields of Jar. Let us enter into his dwelling. Let us worship at his footstool. Advance, O Lord, to your resting place, you and the ark of your majesty. May your priests be clothed with justice. Let your faithful ones shout merrily for joy. For the sake of David, your servant, reject not the plea of your anointed. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. After making the crossing to the other side of the sea, Jesus and his disciples came to the land of Gennesaret and tied up there. As they were leaving the boat, people immediately recognized him. They scurried about the surrounding country and began to bring in the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. Whatever villages or towns or countryside he entered, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that he, they may touch only the tassel of his cloak, and as many as touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise 
praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the first reading, the Ark of the Covenant is brought to King Solomon in Jerusalem and placed in the sanctuary of the temple. The Lord's glory fills the temple, which Solomon calls a dwelling where the Lord may abide forever. In the gospel, people recognize Jesus and bring the sick to him to be healed. For the chosen people of Israel, the Lord dwelled among them in the temple. In Christ Jesus, he came to dwell among and with each one of us. As his followers, we have the great joy of knowing that God's presence abides with us forever in the self-sacrificing love that Christ has for each of us. And so the focus is the glory of the Lord dwells among us. The glory of the Lord dwells among us. The Lord is here. And how important it is for us to approach the Lord in faith. As we see the sick, they begged him that they may touch only the tassel on his cloak, and as many as touched it were healed. My dear brothers and sisters, how important it is to have faith in the Lord's healing power because we have something so much better than touching the tassel of Jesus. In a few moments, you will receive Jesus in the Most Holy Eucharist. And the Eucharist is healing. The Eucharist can bring us healing beyond all our imagination. Perhaps not the physical healing that we might like. Who wants to suffer? But emotional, spiritual, and yes, it, yes, physical healing too. But what did the sick have in the gospel? They believed. They believed that Jesus could heal only by touching an article of, a clo of his clothing. But we don't touch the article of his clothing, we touch him. The Eucharist is him, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Imagine the power that's there for those who believe, those who approach in faith, There's such tremendous power, such tremendous wealth right there in that moment. The Eucharist, as I mentioned, my dear brothers and sisters, you know, yesterday as I was talking to the parents and talking about, I end up getting into the Eucharist and, you know, talking about the Eucharist is Jesus approaching you and me in humility. And we had time for adoration. And, you know, we adore Jesus. When Jesus is on the altar in the Most Blessed Sacrament, Jesus is adoring you and me. But the other thing I said about the Eucharist, Jesus chose the humble elements of bread and wine to become his own body and blood. Because what does bread and wine represent? Well, bread, nourishment, strength. The same thing with the element of wine, nourishment. But also, if we think about it, my dear brothers and sisters, the element of wine, what's in the element of wine? A little bit of alcohol. And what is alcohol? What do we use alcohol for? In the extraordinary form, the priest would purify his fingers without, with the wine, too, after the consecration. What does that represent? 
sanitary cleansing. The Eucharist, my dear brothers and sisters, after the consecration, the bread and wine become his body and blood, soul and divinity, the very substance. But the accents remain in a sense of nourishment and strength and healing. Ah, the wisdom of the Lord in choosing these hum humble elements to become his own body and blood. Remember that, my dear brothers and sisters. The Eucharist is the Lord by the tremendous miracle of the transubstantiation. The substance is changed from bread and wine to the, his own body and blood to bring us healing and peace. And so the glory of the Lord does dwell among us. And not only will he dwell among us, present in the tabernacle, on the altar, but he dwells in us, my dear brothers and sisters. Sorry, I'm getting excited at 7.30 in the morning to think about this. But we should think about it. Because the Lord dwells in us. And as the Lord dwells in us, when we go out there, my dear brothers and sisters, we too, by God's grace, if we allow him to work in and through us, can also bring Christ's healing to others. So may we pray today that our actions, our words, may bring people to Christ, may bring them healing and peace. Remind people, my dear brothers and sisters, that the glory of the Lord dwells both among us and in us. With hope in the abundant goodness of our loving God, we bring him our prayer, prayer cares and concerns. <coughs> For vocations to the priesthood and religious life, may the Lord bless our holy church with committed men and women. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For elected officials, may the work to bring about a just society for everyone, especially for those whose voices are often unheard. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those burdened by any kind of difficulty, especially those who are ill and struggling with their pain, may God's grace bring them comfort and relief. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all in this faith community, may we evangelize in our everyday lives through our words and actions. Let us pray to the Lord. For all who have died, may they enjoy eternal life in heaven and behold the face of God. Let us pray to the Lord. For the intention of the holy sacrifice to the mass being offered this morning for Cassandra D'Angelo. Let us pray to the Lord. <coughs> Merciful God, you provide for all people and bring healing to those who call upon you. Hear the prayers we beg we offer you, we pray, and grant them according to your holy will. Through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. For to the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Amen. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May the offerings we bring in commemoration of blessed St. Agatha win your gracious acceptance, O Lord, we pray, just as the struggle over suffering and passion was pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are glorified when your saints are praised. Their very sufferings are but wonders of your might. In your mercy, you give ardor to their faith. To their endurance, you grant firm resolve. And in their struggle, the victory is yours through Christ our Lord. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration. And we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and blemished sacrifices which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, and all those who hold to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you the sacrifice of praise, or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls and hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glories of the Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and count them on the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, 
and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us in this participation the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, to those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, which on the Baptist deem Matthias Barnabas, Ignatius Alexander Marcellinus Peter, Felicity Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep my soul safe for eternal life.
Christ. body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. body of Christ the body of Christ the body of Christ the body of Christ the body of Christ amen the body of Christ body of Christ Amen. the 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 body of Christ Let us pray. O God, who bestowed on blessed St. Agatha a crown among the saints for her twofold triumph of virginity and martyrdom, grant, we pray, through the power of the sacrament, that bravely overcoming every evil, we may obtain the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. 
The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks be to God. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do that, O Prince of the Heavenly Host. By the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who pry about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Verse 8. Venerable Sosingalis.